Well, hello once again, boys and girls. It's your old pal Jingles Roscoe, back with another moving picture show. Have you ever looked at a nifty, totally original character, either on a cartoon or made by one of your favorite World Wide Web palios, and thought to yourself, well, golly gee willikers, I wish I could make a totally cracking character like that one. Well, worry not, children. For your old pal Jingles has compiled a small and simple list of tips to help you on your way to making some excellent characters of your very own. Here we go. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm not going to do that that whole video. <laughs> so, uh, as the title suggests, I'm going to try and give some tips and tricks on uh, how to create more interesting and uh, just g get around to making some uh, new OCs, you know. And by OCs, I, I, in this, the, for the purposes of this video, it's going to be um, completely unique and completely original OCs. And... The argument can be made that technically nothing on this earth is uh, completely original anymore. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's there's some truth to that. But uh, the idea here is to kind of teach people, especially younger artists, um, how about how to go about making OCs, especially if you don't really have very many or you want to make some more, but you want to make them like interesting or or cool or whatever. All right. Um, so I wrote down a, a list here on just like how to go about making an OC um, and um, making an interesting OC. Um, so we'll go over the steps that I only have three uh, steps, but they're all the three steps are all broken down into like bigger parts. So um, the first thing you want to do is number one come up with a character um that may seem pretty easy um some some people think it's really difficult to do um and th there's a lot of resources out there that can really be a big help on trying to figure out what exactly it is that you want to do when creating uh an oc um so i have um jazz's uh, Artie Games app, and they randomly generate um, just characters, right? And it's it's to help you become more creative and figure out what you want to make in your own character and stuff. So it forces you to try and make a character around a random prompt, and that's the main reason why I purchased the app. Um, and I've I've used it a few times, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's really great for that. But uh, you want to you want to get very um, simple stuff uh, written down first things first when you want to make your new character. Um, you want to do uh, what gender is the character, what race is the character, and by race I don't necessarily mean like um, what what ethnicity somebody is. Um, it could also be. Like, uh, are they human? Are they an elf? Are they, um, I don't know, a xenomorph? Are they whatever, you know? Preferably not a xenomorph because we want to we wanna make really original characters. We don't want to, well, you can if you want. And kind of these rules can also still apply for making uh, original characters, uh, but based in an, an existing universe for fan purposes right um but um my list is meant for to help you make totally new worlds and totally new settings um but yes race um how old are they what what are their characteristics what are, what's their personality what's the what's the setting the time and and place of this where, where this world takes place what are their strengths and weaknesses? Um, the, this is all kind of stuff that you want to just think about when creating a character. Um, and I was... Uh, when when S Comic Maker was streaming a few weeks ago, uh, she gave me a prompt of... Uh, and I have it written down here. It's a, it's a duck detective, right? 
Uh, he's he's a 1940s era detective with like a trench coat and stuff, and he he has a pipe that blows bubbles. He's grizzled, but he's obsessed with finding his brother's killer, which um, then uh, her husband uh, <laughs> said. Uh, what if it was bread? Because a lot of people don't know this, but uh, a whole lot of bread is really unhealthy for ducks. Um, and so uh, a lot of people just feed ducks whatever and uh, <laughs> as much bread as they want, and that's not good for them. Uh, and so that was the joke. And so I drew this picture here um, as kind of like what I kind of threw together from that like idea. And... Um, from there that that's a good start right uh for your character and so that's step one is to try and figure out that stuff for your character once you've gotten that down you want to start actually hard designing your character and what you would do is that you would start refining the character using just making initial sketches right and i'm i'll show you some sketches that i made uh, for this duck detective, which we were affectionately referring to as the duck detective. Um, and he, the, there's some sketches that I made for him. Uh, but also make sure to use reference images for anything that you don't know like 100% about. Um, because it's really hard to just come up with something if you don't know where the baseline of it is. Right? And so I, I, I got a bunch of different reference images of like period style like outfits with like trench coats and like fedoras and stuff like that that people were dressing back in the 40s um and then you know try different things you know if um if it's a kind of character that like a lot of people have been kind of making over the years try changing it up make them a little bit different you know uh make your characters unique add stuff that makes them unique in this case it's a it's a grizzled duck detective right um and uh he blows bubbles with a little bubble pipe um and and also just make sure you try to go for recognizability right and uh just just yeah make your character unique try to make them recognizable um that could mean like a lot of intricate detail but i'm not really super into making a lot of intricate detail on a character i like having simple characters that still stand out and are unique um so uh i took the detective and i refined him and i gave him more of like a story a backstory i gave him um you know i established stuff and i wrote it all down right so this is the example that i have here this here is Bertram Phineas Waterfowl. Waterfowl. Bertram Phineas Waterfowl. Um, also known as uh, Bertram P. Waterfowl, P.I. Private investigator. Right? He's Bert to his friends and Bertie to some other individuals. Um, gender male. Uh, age, he's in his early 40s. He's not super old. Um, but he's old enough to have been, you know doing this work for a very long time and being very experienced in it um he's the place he's from an alternate earth where instead of humans they're animals right anthropomorphic animals so no humans in this universe that i've put together um his strengths and uh this is this is where a lot of interesting stuff comes in he's a master detective right he's he's dedicated he's had police training so he's he knows how to how to use police based weaponry stuff like that um detective skills he's cool headed right he's very clever he's analytical and he cares very deeply for his close friends and like family his weaknesses and it's always important to establish weaknesses with your character not just strengths his weaknesses are he has an unhealthy obsession with his brother's killer and finding out whoever did it um, he's kind of grating. He's cold, right? He's not much of a team player. He doesn't really get along with others. Um, I also thought of maybe he was an alcoholic, but um, I decided like this setting that I was creating, I wanted to make it more family friendly. So not an alcoholic. Alcohol probably doesn't even exist in this world because <laughs> it's for, you know, 
a more family setting. Um, and then I made a special section. I made strengths, weaknesses, and special. And special is uh, interesting little quirks that are neither like positive or negative, right? And then um, and I made it a special little quirk. It says, uh, when thinking deeply about a case and really thinking hard about solving something, uh, he has this weird tick that makes him blow bubbles on his little toy pipe that he got as a joke gift from his brother after solving a major crime. Um, and so the, his, his pipe is linked to his brother in that way also. And um, he blows bubbles in it uh, when he's thinking very, very hard and very deeply. So I thought that was a fun little thing. Um, he has, his associates, uh, William Lee Waterfowl, uh, Will... That's his brother's name, his deceased brother, who was, and I, I, I specified um, he was a duck because they're brothers and he's also a duck. Um, and then I, I have the character Susie May Pintail, who is his secretary slash clerk um, that he hired on, who's also a duck. And then his former uh, boss, the police chief, Bernard O'Do- O'Doyle, excuse me, Bernard O'Doyle. Um, he's one of his oldest friends and, and like I said, uh, former, former Boston police chief. Um, so I made a a little summary that I, I wrote all down here. Um, Bertram P. Waterfowl was once a highly decorated detective in the Los Angeles police force, able to solve some of the biggest cases of the decade, including the case of the missing children in the summer of 42. All that changed when his brothers in... When his brothers, investigative reporter Will Waterfowl, when his life was mysteriously cut short one day, everyone thought his death was caused by unhealthy eating habits involving too much bread, but Bertram suspected otherwise. Bertram noted that while Will didn't always have the healthiest of eating habits, he was far from one who would overindulge to that degree. Degree. He obsessed with his brother's case, ignoring many of his other cases. This obsession eventually cost him his badge and his job at the LAPD. Soon after, Bertram founded his own private investigation agency and hired on his secretary slash clerk named Susie May Pintel. With the help of his confidant, Susie May, and his former boss, police chief Bernard O'Doyle, he solved many smaller local cases while he solves many smaller local cases while in the pursuit of his brother's killer and the mystery surrounding his death. So this is kind of like the amount of work and stuff that you want to actually put into creating a character like this, right? Just have us a, a, a brief, I, I made mine kind of long, uh, but a brief synopsis of what your character is like, what their backstory is, that kind of stuff. Because um, then that really helps out um, when trying to write for this character. Once you've established, okay, this character is like this. Um, if they were in a, it really helps if they, somebody gives you like a random situation where this character could be in, you'd be like, oh, well, then they would act like this. Cause you would know by this point. Um, so after you've gotten to this point, you've drawn sketches, refined the character and written out a synopsis, gotten all of their strengths, weaknesses, and other stuff written down. Um, you don't really need associates, uh, but it helps a lot if you, uh, understand that part of the character as well. Once you have all of that together, then you put it all together. Um, make an actual character sheet with all the important information on there. Um, and all the important information would be information that you consider to be important. Um, so if you want to include strengths, weaknesses, all that stuff, a small synopsis, that kind of stuff, uh, is really good to help you stay on track as well as, um, really help you establish really what this character looks like. And that's something that can take a really long time to try and figure out. Um, I've had dozens of OCs from, oh, decades ago, a decade ago that, um, I, I, I drew when I was a lot younger, didn't really know how to create really good characters and so um they're not super great (laughs) um but it's something that i i've i've improved on over the years right and uh so if you create a character that is 
and you want to refine them and make them better over years, that's fine too. Um, but create a character sheet with all the important information and make a fully realized drawing of the character. Um, and just remember to continue to refine all the time. Continue to refine this character until you get them to the point where you're just all like, this character is right where I want him to be because that's gonna, that's something that could take a really long time. Um, some people are faster at it than others and that's fine if you're a little bit slower. That's something that, it's a little fun process to go over, especially if you really care about your character. And the most important thing of everything is to make sure you really love your OC. Um, I have, a, like I said, dozens of OCs that have just kind of fizzled away, but I still have pictures of them and uh, I still have like their information written down and stuff like that. Um, eventually, like the stories that I had them based around, um, as I've gotten older, I'm like, I don't think I want to actually write something like that, but I really like this character. And eventually you could end up reusing that character in a completely different setting. Um, on, on Twitter, I, I posted uh, a picture of uh, a character that I came across that is almost 10 years old now, um, that I kind of, a design that I kind of threw together for a friend before. But um, like I came across them again and I was all like, man, there are elements about this character that I really, really liked. And so I redrew them and refined it and used, um, used references that because I didn't use reference back in the day um, and I refined this character into a he's essentially the same but he looks a lot better um, and um, the project that I made him for is pretty much done <laughs> it's pretty much done so it's not gonna happen anymore which is totally fine because um, now I'm likely to reuse this character for a different project that I'm looking into making with my younger brother, Smiter. Um, and so that's just something that you can you can think about. Um, and yeah, there's the, the, the finished uh, refined picture of Bertram and then the, um, the, the fully realized image afterwards. And it, like I said, it's something to have fun with. It's there's no hard and fast rules for making an OC. These are all just kind of tips. I'm no expert on making OCs. I don't have like a million billion OCs like other people do. I have a few OCs and I deeply care about all of them. Um, and that's fine to only have a few. But um, I'm hoping that this little list and it's, it's pretty small list kind of helps you think more creatively and helps you create more interesting and better OCs over time. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I think I'm going to try and draw more OCs now. <laughs> um, and if you guys come up with some really cool and interesting OCs from this video, please feel free to tweet them at me. You know, I'm at Jingles Roscoe, and uh, I'll also link it in the description. Um, that'd be really awesome, and I'd love to see them. Um, well, I hope, uh, to hope to have another video for you guys here real soon. Yeah, have a good one.